Okay, so do you guys all see a rainbow looking brain right now? Rainbow looking head? Okay, I'm hearing a mix of yes and no. So there's going to be a, a little bit of a, a different delay between you guys, just b based on your connection. So this is actually a uh, this is a CAT scan. So this is a three-dimensional data set uh, of all the data that's that's captured in a CAT scan. So it's not just slices that you get actually. Um, and so the colors actually depict um, the different reflectivities to X-rays. Um, I'm going to turn on the face left. Sorry, I'm also adjusting the future as we talk there. And so the green pixels are um, the features that are brightly, are very reflective. So bone, so you can see the sinuses, you can see the skull, versus the red pixels are um, features that are, that are not very reflective to x-rays there. So skin and brain tissue. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> All right, so if we look at just the very uh, dim pixels, um, the, uh, so the, the aspects that are very transmissive, transmissive of x-rays, you have the skin layer. So um, this is, so you actually, if you just, if you just selectively choose to display, uh, hold on. If you just selectively choose to display dim data in the CT, you will get skin not just on the exterior, but you can see the tissue lined surfaces, the, the sinuses, um, uh, you know, inside, and you can also see the uh, inner ear structures. We're a little bit delayed, but, and if you look at just the bright features, so highly reflective of x-rays, you get the bone there, and I'm going to try to give you a little bit of, of the fantastic voyage experience of <laughs> checking out the skull. So, you know, just to remind you, this is actually, this is all from one data set, and you know, neuroradiologists are actually still used to taking a three-dimensional data set and turning it into two-dimensional images and looking at slices. Um, but as visualization tools improve um, and people, more and more people realize that uh, 3D data visualization is really cool, I anticipate, um, I anticipate the full 3D data set and visualizations thereof being used more often for, uh, for diagnoses. So let me... Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, sorry if I uh, rammed anyone through the skull there, but uh, you know, so we 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 do these presentations to general audiences as well, so not medical students, um, and uh, <clears throat> it it comes as news to people that the skull is more than one bone there. Um, and it's just always fun for everyone to, uh, <laughs> to uh, get smacked by various aspects of the cranium. Okay, so we've turned off the skull and now we're actually looking at MRI data. So does anyone know what this aggregate structure is that we're looking at here, the, the uh, kind of magenta thing, or the, uh, the red guy? Brain stem. Brain stem. And the bulbous protrusion in the front? That's right. Um, and the little protrusions coming out the sides, you can actually see some of the cranial nerves. Um, we've turned the, we've actually made like a kind of a glass brain type uh, surface mesh over the cortex. Um, but uh, yeah, just to kind of keep your orientation there. Um, so, you know, things look kind of a little bit lumpy and, uh, you know, not maybe as smooth as the models that you see in your textbook. Um, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, you can move your head around and <laughs> move throughout the data. But um, so that's, that's because this is actually from real data. So this is from um, an MRI data set where the, the various structures have been segmented based on kind of a, uh, a consensus of many MRI scans there. Okay, so we turned on two structures there. So in magenta, the true magenta, what structure is that? It's uh, sensory information gets gated through there except for olfaction. Thalamus, thalamus. Uh, and yellow below? It's got thalamus in its name. <laughs> Have thalamus, connects the brain to the endocrine system there, okay. And, um, so we're gonna, uh, as best as I can, at kind of controlling in advance and narrating later, I'm gonna try to do a little build-a-brain experiment for us because 
I see on the various whiteboards and the, the, the modules, people drawing up various structures from the basal ganglia. So, okay, so what have I turned on right now? It comes from the word seahorse in Greek. That's right. For that one person who said hippocampus, yeah, so hippocampus, important for memory and learning. So the neat thing about the hippocampus is you've probably seen both like three-dimensional models of this as well as, you know, maybe just cross-sections. So when you look at a cross-section, the hippocampus has this really cool interlocking C design. Um, Um, but when you're just kind of looking at the, uh, the gross structure, it looks like, I mean, it looks more like shrimp than a sea monster. Um, so it's a little bit like a jelly roll. When you s <laughs> until you actually slice it, you can't see the, the, uh, the, the, the cool structure within. Okay, so let's add to this. Okay, what have I just put on in front of the hippocampus? Important for emotion associating memories with uh, emotions <laughs> that's right there we go we got the amygdala All right. all right let me switch some stuff on no i think that's gonna get automatically switched on there we go yeah, and sorry for zooming in and out. Um, it's a combination of tricks that help me narrate for the, the past, <laughs> but also uh, you know, just to preserve the action experience for you guys. So by the way, please take breaks if you're feeling sick or dizzy or you're just tired of the brain. Okay, so I have, what have I just put on? Part of the basal ganglia it is the putamen. Everyone was going to say that, right? Totally. Oh, okay. Yeah, and sorry if we're sorry if we're really close up the um, the the glass brain mesh um, to kind of keep as your placeholder the resolution of that. It looks just really, uh, it, it looks just a little bit too grainy unless you're really close there, so. Okay, now what have I just put on? The caudate. See? <laughs> See, this, the caudate, I find, especially is one of these structures that it looks kind of like a toy when you're looking at it in the book. Um, but, uh, but once you kind of add it on and actually see it, uh, recognize it more from real data and actually looking like something real that could be melted into structures next to it, it's, uh, it's, a, little bit, uh, it's a little bit clearer, at least for me. Okay, all right, so I don't know if it's colorized, but I have just, it. okay, there we go. What have I just slapped on to the basal ganglia? S structure uh, critical in addiction and reward. The nucleus, I come in, there we go. This basal ganglia is really annoyingly packed with uh, test material. <laughs> Okay, so enough of the basal ganglia and, and stuff outside. Um, I've turned on the cerebral cortex here, and so we're looking at which lobe right now? What are we facing with? The temporal lobe. Okay, and so what is that main fissure that you're seeing between the temporal lobe and the rest of the brain? Right, or the lateral fissure. Um, and okay, uh, let's see if I can back out a little bit. Okay. And so the central sulcus is between which colors? That's right. Um, the red and yellow there. And so if we were looking for, um, say, primary motor cortex, um, which color would we be? Which side? Yellow. yellow. And sensory? 
<laughs> that was the other option. Okay, so that's MRI, which is basically um, you know maps of the presence of water. But if we actually want to see, so we're going to go into the, some of the high resolution. The um, if you actually want to see neurons, you need to switch to a non uh, typically non-clinical imaging modality. So we're going to actually go into a volume of real data um, that we took with two-photon microscopy. So it's a, it's a high-resolution fluorescence microscopy technique, and we are looking actually at a set of uh, cortical pyramidal cells. So the dense weave on top, that's, that's uh, well, so, so, so what part of the neuron is the dense weave leading down into the cell bodies there? There's two major choices. There's axons and dendrites. Dendrites. Yeah, that, that's right. I always thought that the, the cortical pyramidal cells are so... It, <laughs> it's counterintuitive. You see these, these uh, long processes that branch at the ends, um, you know, a priori, and, and also the pyramidal cell bodies are kind of pointing in that direction. That almost looks like the axon, but no, it's actually... Th those are the dendrites. Um, and the cell bodies, you know, those are the blobs there. Um, uh, I apologize if you're getting a little lost in the trees here, but um, this is what happens when you're flying through the brain and you become the size of a neuron. Um, so below the cell bodies, let's see if we can do this. DTI static. All right. Okay. What are the cortex are? Um, we are in the primary sensory cortex, and let me just. The, the dendrites are these long. Yeah, so the dendrites are yes. So I'm sorry, I'm turning me on. The dendrites are um, everything that you see on top of the cell. So coming down from you know the your ceiling down to the cell bodies, right. those are actually the dendrites, the apical dendrites, and the surface of the cortex is a highly networking layer where you have dendritic processes overlapping from uh, or connecting from multiple cells there. The cell, on the, floor, right? the cell bodies are kind of on that floor. So below the cell bodies, that's actually where the axons are, but you can't see the axons very well because um, to get high resolution, you use light, but light doesn't penetrate very deep into tissue without scattering, getting absorbed. It's like looking through a glass of milk. Um, so to actually see the axons, you can use uh, another type of approach with MRI data. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of diffusion MRI, um, where you can actually, um, instead of looking just at the bulk presence of water, you take two images quickly, one after another, and you think, well, the water is just going to stay where it is, right? Um, but actually, here, let me check it out. Um, but actually, um, water will have diffused just a little bit within that time between the two images. Um, and uh, yeah, so essentially, you can you can take that information of the dirt, the um, path along with water has has taken um, and reconstruct a pathway. And those are actually nerve fiber pathways. And so these cool colors here, those actually mean something. Um, so their directionality. So red codes left to right hemisphere. So right now you're looking down at uh, fibers, nerve fibers, a really dense collection of that that's going from hemisphere to hemisphere. Any guess what that white matter structure is? Carpus callosum. So there you see it's not just a, like a wad of fat there, but it's actually, um, it's actually a bundle of, a, a huge bundle of nerve fibers going uh, across the hemispheres. So um, yeah, and so here, right, and so um, the green fibers are front, are back of the head to the front of the head, and the blue are on average um, cortex down to the brain stem there. So what's neat is that you can um, you can actually see. Uh, sorry, what's neat is that you can kind of see where sensory information may be coming up from the brain stem actually. Uh, actually uh, projects to, like in the cortex, for example. So you can see um, some of the blue fibers actually going to primary sensory cortex there. I like it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, sorry if it's kind of a um, spaghetti all up in your face, but uh, yeah, the colors are, I mean, without without the colors, it just would look like crazy spaghetti. So, um, it's 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 a good scientific visualization tool there. 
Um, okay, so um, I should say that you know all this all this data, this is real data, and we've managed to kind of nest it together in one head. Um, but uh, what I didn't tell you is that actually this project started out as a collaboration with um, uh, with various planetaria throughout the world. So. Uh, this actually started out taking the tools of astro visualization, um, so databases of every observed astronomical object, and uh, so we took these digital universe atlases and input into into that world um, uh, all the brain data. So we actually have this brain to scale um, on Earth somewhere, and so I'll actually pull back. Um, to kind of show you what else is going on. So this will appear for you in like 30 seconds. Um, yeah, so you'll kind of see your brain in the context of the universe here, but the, the theme that I want to continue between the brain and everything else is that of imaging, right? So there was no actual imaging modality that we were able to use to connect the, both the micro and the macro scale on. So the, the micro, we needed optical and where, uh, yeah, so you're, you're flying out a little bit now and you can see the, the scales on that, that we have the various data. Um, so the problem with light is, that, is scattering and absorption and you have that same problem in astro visualization. So if you use light, you know, infrared or whatever visible, um, if you want to see far out into space, um, <laughs> you're still gonna, light still encounters dust and gas and everything and gets absorbed. So I will, you'll see some of the repercussions of that in, uh, as we pull back to the Milky Way. Yeah, it, this is the real universe. So these, this is, uh, I mean, through your phone. Uh, so <laughs> this is every, uh, this is, I think as of maybe 10 years ago, maybe it's been updated, maybe five years ago, every observed astronomical object uh, in the cosmos. So those stars, those planets, those are the orbits, those are actually there. So these are actual stars within the Milky Way. And we're going to back out from the Milky Way there. And keep your eye on what you're seeing. There we go. Whoops. Let's pull back a little bit. Okay. So that was the side profile of the Milky Way. And now we're going to maybe look at the disk as you're used to seeing it. But did you notice how when you're looking at the, at the Milky Way from the side on, it actually looks kind of like a dark stripe? That's because when you're trying to look along the galactic plane, um, light gets scattered and absorbed, and you actually can't see well along the galactic plane. It's the same issue of why you can't see <laughs> through, through the brain because of scattering and absorption using light. Um, so you have the same, same issues uh, in astro. Uh, astro imaging. So we're going to pull out now a little bit further. So that, these are actually all the galaxies, uh, part of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. So this is now data from American Museum of Natural History's Digital Universe Atlas. Okay, so all the galaxies. This will not be on your neuroanatomy <laughs> component of the test tomorrow. So you see that there's kind of this bow tie structure there of all the galaxies. Do you guys actually think the universe has a bow tie structure? I mean, the universe is nifty. Um, no, so that bow tie is because um, the, the, black tree, the black regions um, are what you can kind of see through our galactic plane. So it's hard to see through the galactic plane. And so it's hard to see those large regions of the universe there. Um, there's stuff presumably there, but it requires a lot of observation time and uh, a lot of funding to spend to spend time with your telescope looking at those areas. So that's a good example of how um, scientific funding kind of limits our ability to absorb observe the universe. So yeah, so um, oh, and maybe you can you kind of notice um, there's sort of like this fan-like structure. There's a uh, um, each lobe of the uh, of the bow tie, so to say, has looks like it has a bunch of planes there. Um, so those are individual. The, um, those are kind of individual uh, missions uh, or or scanning sessions, uh, mapping out 
um, mapping out specific parts of the sky there. It's expensive to, to, uh, to have your telescope scare, stare for so long. Um, so you gotta kind of pick and choose what regions of the sky you wanna target. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to leave you here in the freezing vacuum of space and wish you happy studying tomorrow. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> So, yeah, so thanks for being part of this. Let me just adjust one thing here.